two. Welcome back, WNST, Towson, Baltimore, and Adams Jeep in Aberdeen. Man, Josh is up here signing. We had the cutest little girl, Lucy, who took a picture. She was chatting me up before you got up here, telling me about what it's like to be in kindergarten in 2019. So you thought you know, the line of questioning for you and, and, and first segment was tough, man. I, I'm getting questions from kindergartners here. <laughs> Luke, you got a million football things to get to before I talk Purple Rain and memories and Detroit and Arizona and old memories and New Orleans and 8-2 and, and all that. But you're always tactical, so be tactical. Well, I'm Go not ahead. that tactical. A little but, tactical. Well, Josh, I wanted to get your thoughts on this because you're back. Uh, you talked about how things haven't changed around here. But one thing that I definitely notice about this defense this year is – how multiple you guys are, how many different sub packages you're running. I mean, I think back to 2011 when you broke into the league and the Ravens were always ahead of the curve in terms of showing different looks, but usually it was base, you know, nickel package. And at that point it was, is it going to be Jameel McLean or Danelle Ellerby in those passing situations? But boy, uh, I look at the snap count and the number of guys that play, the number of inside linebackers rotating, Nickel, dime, sometimes quarter package. I mean, how much has defense changed in that way from the time that you entered the league and until now? I mean, I just think the league changed in general. I mean, not necessarily just defensively. Um, when I came in the league, it was still fullbacks existing just to be <laughs> blockers and come in and try to knock a linebacker Now they're 300-pound the defensive tackles. Yeah, yeah, every <laughs> once in a while. I mean, but uh, there's not that often, you know what I mean, you get the fullback, traditional affirmation, things like that all the time. Now everything is all about, you know, changing emotions messing with your eyes and trying to get you thinking this way going that way it's, it's a whole another level now and obviously linebackers ain't even linebackers no more they're safeties converted linebackers and all kind of stuff so the league has just transformed into what it is now it's kind of a it's a version of college in a sense and uh, I think that just goes with the defenses have to be multiple in a sense now too because the offense advanced you got to be a little bit more advanced on defense otherwise it's going to be 90 to uh, 90 to 95 kind of <laughs> games every week I think it's interesting from the standpoint of we always thought of defensive line, pass rushers rotating, but and this started last year with Wink Martindale in the secondary, had Marlon Humphrey, Jimmy Smith, Brandon Carr, three guys who were traditionally outside corners, and they rotated, and they had Tavon Young, who of course is injured this mm -hmm. year, but we're now seeing that at the second level of the defense with the linebackers, and you know, looking at yesterday's game from a snap count standpoint, three different linebackers, but none of you guys were on the field for even 50% of the snaps. So from a standpoint of that rotating and being multiple, how much of an advantage is it for you guys from a you know, staying fresh standpoint, staying healthy, staying fresh when you're in the fourth quarter? You haven't played 65 snaps. Uh, you might have only played 30 or 35 or 40. I'd have to think over the course of 16 weeks, that has to be an advantage. For yeah, you I mean, it's, it keeps us fresh and the guys rolling and doing the things we need to do, obviously us on special teams and stuff like that. So it just keeps us going. But it, all, and every, it changes every week. It sure. all depends on the, the game and how it goes and stuff like that. Obviously, the way the game went yesterday went to more. Obviously, they're trying to, you know, trying to play catch up, more right. passing and stuff like that. So, it, it, I mean, every week is a different challenge. So it all depends on what challenge it represents and who, who gets what and stuff like that. And that's, you can't control that until it comes about until Sunday. And I just think we do a wonderful job of making sure we have a great, great package and, and making sure at the end of the day we're out there to win the game. I mean, that's what the, that's what matters at the end of the day. And we got a, a bunch of unselfish players who don't really matter as long as we're out there. When you're out there, you're doing what you're supposed to do and make plays when you need to. And and, and uh, obviously the most important thing is to win. You, you mentioned unselfish. I mean, that that's really the key word in this. And Luke's a big baseball guy. We're both big baseball guys. And how much baseball has changed from relief pitching to what it means to be pinch hit for. You know, how offensive it would be to be pinch hit for in the 70s or the 80s. Same thing, I would think, for the mindset of, we're not an 11-man unit. We're probably about an 18-man unit. And, you know, I wrote Purple Rain 1 all those years ago, and I go back to how rotational even that team was along the D-line where Larry Webster and a Lionel Dalton, who were not starters but were big, big part of that team, you know, as well as linebackers and safeties where you're going to, at that time, the, the dime package was exotic, right, 20 years ago. Now, you know, we're – at that time you needed 13 or 14 guys. Now it's – 18 guys and you're one of them maybe it's even generational that guys even younger than you it's just sort of accepted that 
you're not going to be a 70 snap guy. You're not a hero. You're not a four down guy. You want to be, but there's somebody in there that's a better relief pitcher to use a baseball than you in certain cases. That takes unselfishness. That's that's not for everybody in the league, right? And, and, and to the offense as well. The Willie Sneed, the, the blocking wide receivers who don't want the ball 12 times. Everybody wants the ball 12, but, mm. but can live with it. That's an assemblage, and again, back to Eric and back to the organization, unselfish players. That's... That's what's making this thing fire, right? Yeah, I think it's, that's what it makes a great team in general. Uh, when you got guys who are just caring about playing for each other, that just makes it makes it so special. I just think we, like you, like I've, I said, uh, we're both saying right now, we've got a, a unselfish group. And, and at the end of the day, it's all about getting this win. And we keep um, doing what we're supposed to do in, in the weight room, in the training room, in the meeting rooms, and taking it to the field. And then when it comes on Sunday, you just got to be ready when your name is called and when your number is called and execute. Um, I didn't even realize that Seth got his first touchdown of the season yesterday as well. So. Nick but last I mean, week yeah, before that, yeah, you know, yeah, you know what I mean. So, the first of so at the end right? of the day, you know what I mean. I mean, I would have thought he had like five this year or something like that. But it, at the end of the day, it doesn't matter because we know when they will come to us, we're gonna make the plays we need to make, and uh, we just do a great job, make sure everybody stays fresh and stays ready because we know how long this season can be, and it's it's definitely a long one. We definitely include the preseason games and and obviously postseason. I'll speak for everybody here at Adam Sheep and Aberdeen. Winning is fun, right? It's more fun <laughs> to win than to lose for sure. Do you feel the confidence growing on this defense? Because for me, one of the big takeaways ways from yesterday. I mean, the offense has been incredible. Uh, we, I'm amazed we've gotten this far into our conversation. We haven't, we haven't Lamar mentioned Lamar yet. Jackson on, yet. I, I, I got to wear my special shirt. <laughs> <laughs> but, but Josh, I, I think it had to be so, – and you guys have been playing better and better the last few weeks on defense as it is, but – for the first time in a while, the offense didn't start red hot on the first couple of drives. I mean, they've scored, they had scored on their first drive every game but one mm. uh, going into yesterday. And you guys, you shut uh, te the Texans out in the first couple of drives. They had some opportunities, and, and you guys uh, stonewalled them. I had to think that was big. Not that you guys were lacking confidence, but maybe from a statement standpoint to say, okay, even if our offense isn't firing on all cylinders right out of the gate, this defense can make a statement and play at a high level yeah. as well. I, I know, it's, you know, when you got a really good offense that overpowers and overtakes yeah. everything, but don't get it mistaken the fact that defensively we go out there like, oh, no, offense, we, sure. we're just like going lay back and let offense. No, this by any means, that's not what we do. We go out there each and every play, we're trying to get three and out, three and out, take a turnover each and every play, regardless if our offense is hitting all cylinders or not, because our job is defense to make sure the other team doesn't get in the end zone. That's just, that's the objective. And then when sudden change comes, sudden change uh, comes, we just got to make sure we fight adversity and hold them to, even if it's in plus territory into a field goal or a turnover and stuff like that. But no, we take accountability for our own actions. We can't really worry about what's going on on offense by any means whatsoever. What happens when that ball's up in the air and it's coming right at you and you're like, oh, my God, he's throwing it right at me? <laughs> That's happened a couple times. Well, the first thing yeah. is catch it, right? Yeah, of course. The first thing is definitely catch it. Uh, uh, but, I mean, literally it came fast. Like, I don't know. I mean, on TV don't look as fast, but I promise you in the moment, I was like, oh, it's just like zipped because he tried to, like, you know, to throw it down there to the running back. But uh, no, definitely got to catch the ones that come to you. So Well, be in the right place at the right time, too. Yeah, and too. certainly chasing the quarterback. And we heard so much early in the year before you were here, of course, about – sacking the quarterback and pressure on the quarterback. Where was that going to come from? That was not an issue against Deshaun Watson. Uh, you know, Sonny, I mean, and we think about where they are and where our defense, the, the, the notion that we're getting that kind of pressure, it's the back end covering as well. Mm -hmm. But it's very, very nice to look down on a statue and a very gratifying, I'm sure, for every member of the defense to see that you're sacking the quarterback. Yeah, of course. It's always good to get sacks. Who, who don't love some sacks? And, um, and like you said, I, I mean, I'm hearing that from you right now about – I guess the quarterback sacks and pressure, I guess we had trouble with early in the season. I, well, I guess I don't know. The, one um, of the summer, anybody would have said that's a question mark about the okay. team, was pass rush because yeah. Sizzle's not here. Mosley's got you. Know, they, they, Zedarius signed the big contract. Mm -hmm. So there were guys who weren't here last year, mm -hmm. guys like you that weren't here last <laughs> year, that that led us to say, well, where is this productivity going to come from? Yeah. And we all looked at Matt Judon. I think we looked at Jalen Ferguson and, 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 and Tyus Bowser, the guys that, that they had drafted to do this. But then it's... Can you actually go do it? I mean, yeah. Sizzle, as you know, is a, uh, you know, it's hard to replace that yeah. in a lot of ways. Although Brandon's got a really nice boom box. I, I appreciate the music better this year. I've, I've <laughs> yeah. pointed that out many times. Yes. But, yeah, I just think the guys, they just worked hard and, and doing what they're supposed to do. Um, Tyus and Jalen and Judon, they just, they just going after it each and every week. I, I think – 
we can't get caught up into all the things that everybody else is saying so much. And I, I mean, I think we're doing a really good job of it because obviously everybody's looking at us like, you know, we're having such a great season, stuff like that. But I'm pretty sure like most guys, like if they're, they're like, like me, I'm looking at it like we got so many ways to improve. We have so many ways we can be so much better than what we are now. And, and that's the, that's the key goal each and every week uh, is eliminating complacency and just being, trying to be as consistent as you can be because, you know, like I said before in this game, um, you'll be here today and you're gone tomorrow. And the locker room changes each and every week, practice squad on a regular roster, and that's just how this game goes. So we have a bunch of guys, no matter the obstacle right now, we're just focused on what we're, what is our job to do on Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and then when it comes up. Like you said, we, our short week last next week. I had not a clue it was our short week next week, and I hate that because you remember I said in the locker room, don't tell me about any future <laughs> I games. Two, I hate the future games. Three weeks ago, I said to him, <laughs> I want you to come out and do the show. He said, what night? And I said, after the Houston game, he's like, do we play Houston? I'm like, yeah. We, when, when, and, and, don't tell me. Don't. And he kept saying, don't tell me. Don't tell me. And, and then I, I texted him. I said, all right. Ten days, seven days, and here we are. I, I'm not going to tell you anything about Thanksgiving. <laughs> nah, I don't want to know. All I want to know right now is the Rams. I don't care who we play next. Did you watch I don't Monday care night? Now. Yes, I Sunday, watched Sunday it. I watched night. it. So yeah, I watched Sunday, Sunday night. night. Yeah. Have you played at the Coliseum? You have. Yes, yeah. I played last year at the Coliseum. I, I haven't been out there. Give me a little, you know, little postcard I played, for LA. I played earlier in the season, and it was hot, and I had a full body cramp after the game. So, uh, yeah, that, it, it wasn't that memorable. And then also we got 91 beat. there yeah. today, but it and won't we, be there next. We had a and we had a tough loss early in the year against them when I was at Arizona. So, okay. Yeah, I wasn't much to talk about. But as far as the Coliseum goes, I mean, it's a college stadium. I mean, it's a Coliseum. Yeah. yeah. We go to Auburn. I'm on the field, know. so I don't know what else to expect it's outside not, of it's that. It's not SEC. It's not real. You yeah. Know, like I mean, game. if you want to throw it out there. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Every you know, SEC, SEC guy ball. would say that for sure. <laughs> it's nothing like it. It's nothing like Josh it. Josh <laughs> Bynes joining us out here. We're at it. Adams Jeep in, in Aberdeen. Uh, get your lift kits. Get your dream Jeep. All that great stuff. Uh, it's so good to be back up here. I'm going to come back. I want to talk about the Super Bowl winning team because I got Purple Rain too. I'm going to give you a copy of this. Uh, we're going to talk about uh, Josh Bynes' journey. Luke's here. Going to continue to talk about the Rams this week. We're not on. We're, we're on to Hollywood, I'll say this week. I'll get my sunglasses out. We're back for more Adams Jeep in Aberdeen with Josh Bynes on WNST.net after this. You can, you can applaud. It's okay. 